Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, 4 o'clock, and I think that we will try to get started because uh, we have been informed by the people who are running the facilities that they have some problem with the doors. Apparently, they automatic lock or something. And so we're going to make every effort, although we have it reserved from till 5.30, we're going to try to make every effort to get out by 5 o'clock so they don't run into whatever this door problem is that they have, okay? <laughs> Now, I don't know whether it means they're going to lock us in or, or lock us out. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but anyway, if we can manage to get finished by 5, we'll certainly try to do that today. Because besides that, it's such a gorgeous afternoon that I suspect most people would much prefer to be walking outside than sitting in here anyway. So we'll try to do that. Uh, we will uh, uh, call the meeting to order. And uh, we have several reports on the uh, agenda today that we want to share with our board members and with you. Uh, and uh, we have uh, one item that we're going to um, uh, take up, which has to do with a consulting agreement uh, for someone to help us once the engineering firm's reports are in. Uh, and we'll talk about that in some detail later on, so you'll have an opportunity to understand what that is. Uh, so with that, I'm going to uh, ask Dr. Michael Douglas uh, if he would give us a report on the meetings with the neighborhood association members. We've now met with all of the association groups that are represented by the three uh, study uh, areas, and so I'm going to let him give a synopsis of that so you all have an idea of what's gone on up to now. Michael? Okay, Madam Chairman, uh, our last meeting was February the 8th, uh, the last open meeting with uh, the group here, February the 9th. Uh, Dixon Flake and I sat in on the 12th Street Corridor Friends meeting here the following following evening and just listen. We were not a, uh, an item on the agenda, but uh, listened to uh, the comments uh, of, the, of the group. Uh, I was actually very pleased to, to note that uh, the Craft and Tell group was actually the group that was heading up. The, uh, the, uh, a lot of the work behind the 12th Street Quarter uh, effort. Um, Fred Gentry was the head of that meeting and uh, Kim Richardson was the president of the meeting. The discussion at that particular meeting really focused on uh, the research part and just various issues related to it, which uh, will sort of be a common theme as I go through the various uh, neighborhood meetings that, uh, that we attended. Um, that was February the 9th. March the uh, 15th was the uh, Forest Hills Neighborhood Association meeting, which was held here in this room. Uh, and uh, the board members that were present at that meeting were Mary Good, uh, Bob Johnson, uh, Dixon Flake, and, my, and me. And basically, I think it's fair to say that the, the discussion of that meeting sort of focused in four main areas um, uh, that really sort of uh, centered on the eminent domain uh, issue that is part of the legislation, uh, the fact that people were being displaced from their homes in the area, fair market value for those homes was a very, very important um, uh, discussion and for opportunities for help was the third item that sort of I filtered uh, from the comments of that meeting. And basically, I think that was uh, a, and a common theme that was addressed also by the uh, following neighborhood meeting that we were at, uh, expressed a, a uh, need and a consideration for the board to look at other places than the, uh, than the three that were sort of on the, on the table at that point. Uh, we were we were joined by one of the city directors, uh, Joan Adcock, uh, Joyce Elliott, and the Promise Neighborhood uh, Group were represented at that meeting uh, as well. Uh, that was uh, that was March the 15th uh, in in the in the room here. March 17th, we met a uh, neighborhood meeting that um, I had listed as the Fair Park Neighborhood Association meeting. I think it sort of involved both uh, the Fair Park. Uh, as well as the Oak Forest groups together. I need to be corrected by members present here if I'm, I'm wrong in that. Uh, that meeting, as the neighborhood meeting here, was well attended. I think the meeting we had here that night 
I'm going to guess we had probably 150 people. I may have, I may be overestimating a little bit, but I would say at that Fair Park meeting, we had a similar number of people present. Uh, that was at the U.S. Pizza down on Fair Park. Uh, present at that meeting from the board uh, were Mary Good, uh, Dixon Flay, and me. Um, the, the issues expressed at that meeting, again, were just the same, quite frankly, as those that we have discussed here. The whole issue impinging on this were, were the eminent domain issues that involved displacement from uh, the home in the area, fair market value for the homes, uh, opportunities for help. Uh, certainly uh, a big issue and then uh, the expression of the need to look elsewhere. Uh, I did fail to point out that in the meeting here on the 15th, uh, Joan Adcock actually sort of stressed uh, to the group uh, that the universities that were involved in this have made a commitment to uh, be fair and in this process. I don't know what that means. None of us know what that means, but that is a commitment that the chancellors have made to the city uh, board of directors. Um, again, at the neighborhood meeting at Fair Park, um, uh, the, the uh, city directors were represented by Ken Richardson, who was at that meeting. Joyce Elliott uh, kindly attended that one as well to, uh, to reflect the, uh, the interest of the community as well as the uh, Promise uh, neighborhood project. Uh, the last meeting that I have on my list here was a meeting on March the 29th, which was the Promise Neighborhood meeting, uh, which was held, and I did not make it to that meeting. I don't know if any of the other board members did. I don't think so. I talked to uh, the UAMS uh, people who were present at that meeting, and I don't think we had any of the, the board members there. So, Madam Chairman, that is okay. basically a summary of the uh, community uh, and neighborhood meetings that have been held since uh, since we met uh, met last. Okay, I appreciate that very much. And uh, if we can keep uh, <coughs> questions till the end, it would be helpful. But if there are any absolutely burning direct questions to. Um, uh, uh, to Michael, but this is a, a good time to do that. If there's, but, but this is really just a review of the meetings that we've tried to have with the neighborhoods and try to get information out to all the people concerned. Yes, sir. Do you define opportunities for I'm sorry. Do you define opportunities for help? Well, I think that was a request okay. in general from both of the groups from whom we, uh, with, with whom we met. Uh, I think. The, one of the issues that was raised, which uh, was raised really at both meetings, and that is uh, fair market value should represent a sort of a, a starting point for uh, issues related to this. And where that's going to go from there, we don't know. But uh, I think that as we sort of talk about opportunities for help, I think that's one item that seemed to underlie this. The other is. Uh, the displacement of people uh, from from the uh, from the uh, park site, maybe into neighborhoods that are close by, so that there wouldn't be uh, wouldn't there would be an opportunity for those people that said have been in these areas for uh, for many years to 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 remain in in the neighborhoods. I think uh, uh, Council uh, Director Edcock's comments sort of reflected that, some of the additional comments that she made in addition to comments about the, the commitments from the chancellors. So that's, that's my view, that's my view of what, um, what that means. Thanks. Okay, uh, I think also what that means is that the, uh, the board feels constrained to actually look into that and see what that means and what can be done uh, at the time that some decision has been made. But there's not much point in it until some site selection has happened because there's no point in disturbing folks that are not going to be involved at all. So uh, we, but we did take that under consideration and we do understand that that's an issue and we will look into it to the best of our knowledge. Yes, sir. Uh, my last question. You said it wouldn't make sense to start the environment My question is, is there a plan for some people? Is there a different plan for one set, a different plan for one set, another set, a plan for another set? I'm not sure I understand your question. I, uh, no. Dr. Good said it didn't make sense to serve people who wouldn't be moved. Right. So, it seems as though you're saying people had three separate plans, three separate, three separate mm. 
no, sir, that's not the point. The point is that there are three study areas that are being looked at, and uh, uh, the toll group are going to give you a preliminary of what they're doing, looking at those sites in a moment, and we're also going to talk about a, a, an extra consultant to the board to look at those areas, and what I was saying was that until a site is selected, then there's not much point in talking to a particular group of people, because if you're looking at three separate sites, uh, it's clearly two of those are in the end result not going to be affected. So it seems to us reasonable once we do make a decision as to where the site is going to be, then we need to have an understanding of what the problems are for the people who are in that site and then see what we can do with them at that point. But until we make that decision, then I don't see any reason to have everybody else disturbed until that decision is made. Yes, sir. Go ahead and ask your you follow you have a follow up question quick? Yeah. Well, thank you. If you go to this place, we have the same place as this place people That is correct. Yeah, they won't, and we're not, you know, we're not looking as if you could treat one group differently from another. That's not the point. Well, I guess, then, I guess you didn't get my question. My question is, you don't already have an overall plan, I mean, an overall strategy? We do not. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Is the board when we find out about the other looking elsewhere? We certainly are not looking elsewhere now, okay? You know the world. I would. I never ever say no. That that is not an open question at the moment. Now, whether it will be in the future, I never say never to anything. <laughs> okay. But the three sites that are under consideration at the moment are the three that you all know about. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's move on uh, and let's hear the report from uh, Kraft and Tull. They've done some work already. Uh, Mr. Jerry Kelso is here from that firm. And I think, uh, Jerry, you have a handout that people have gotten? I think so. We've got the uh, extras up front. Yeah, there's a, there's a one-page review of where they are and what they've done so far. So if you've not gotten one of these, please raise your hand and we'll get them passed out. Okay. Well, I'll just go ahead and just stand up here so everybody can hear me. Um, first of all, my name is Jerry Kelso. I'm with Craft and Toll Engineers. Uh, we're a full-service engineering and architecture firm, and uh, I can tell you we are delighted and, uh, and very humbled that uh, we have been selected for this particular project. Um, obviously, our task at hand at this point is to evaluate three different sites um, and provide uh, cost estimates and things of that nature that can help the uh, authority board make a decision on site selection. And uh, so that's, uh, that's our task at hand at this point, and that's how we're going to be moving forward with the next uh, couple of months or so. Um, so with that said, we'll kind of go through the work plan on how we will uh, evaluate these things and, and, and the schedule uh, that we'll be uh, under. Um, the first phase of this uh, project, obviously, we, we take the three different sites, the three different study areas, and uh, we do what's called research and gathering of information. That's uh, basically creating working maps that show the topography and the lay of the land, um, the structures that are on the site, um, the, um, the utilities that are out there, and we use the, that information <clears throat> as we start developing uh, on how each site can be developed. Um, so uh, that's what we've been doing for the last uh, month or so. We've actually just been gathering information and trying to get as much as we uh, can gather about each of the different study areas. Uh, one thing I, I do want to mention, it, I, I do think it's important to move, to evaluate the sites properly, but I do want to move as uh, quickly and as quickly as possible. Uh, obviously, if, if I lived in one of the neighborhoods, I want to know the direction this thing's going. So um, you'll find that uh, we're not going to drag this thing out for several months. We're going to try to move as quickly as possible. So with that, here we are today. We, we, we've done our, our, map, our mapping, and um, <clears throat> Our next step is uh, what we'll do is we'll start laying out conceptual uh, site plans on how the particular sites could be developed. Uh, two different phases is what we've been asked to look at. Uh, phase one of each of, of the project would be uh, possibly about a 100,000 square foot building with adjacent parking to it. Um, and as the particular property 
uh, expands in the future. Uh, we're looking at uh, about a million square foot of, uh, of uh, structure, uh, buildings, uh, with adjacent par parking on about 30 acres. So hopefully by the end of the day, we're going to be right around 30 acres. Um, and that's, how we'll, that's what we'll be uh, looking at as an initial concept plan on each one of these sites. Our next meeting, we hope to have some conceptual first round concept plans. We want to make the next meeting more of a working meeting where we'll uh, work with the board members to see how uh, things could be tweaked or moved around and, and things of that nature uh, and establish cost estimates and things of, of that uh, with each one of these sites. Uh, some of the evaluation criteria, you know, what's going to cost uh, to purchase these properties, the dem uh, demolition costs, we look at the topography, how the, how the dirt is going to be done, the grading, things of that nature, drainage improvements, utility uh, extensions and, and availability. Those are some of the evaluation criteria that we'll be using. Uh, some of the planning aspects of it, accessibility, uh, how accessible is each one of these study areas, how it works with the neighborhoods. Um, we have uh, we are working on the 12th Street corridor, swing, so I think it's uh, it's important to uh, see if one of these sites best fits with uh, some of the ideas of the 12th Street corridor study. Uh, in the proximity of the stakeholders, being UMS, UALR, and uh, Children's Hospital. So those are kind of some of the evaluation criteria that we'll be going through. So again, the first meeting uh, in May is when we'll have our initial concept layouts. We'll kind of have a working meeting. We'll work with the board members. Uh, we'll have some cost estimates put together. We may actually look at possibly eliminating one site at that point. Uh, so we'll just have to look at it and see. But we'll get everybody's comments back and then go back, redo the concept plans, uh, probably a month later. So we've had our meetings made. Uh, so we'll have our, our final meeting in June where we hope to have a final concept plan <coughs> Again, get one more round of comments, um, and then uh, after that meeting, and about two weeks later, we'll have our deliverables, which will be our final report that lays out everything that we've evaluated, uh, cost to develop this site, some of the planning aspects that I just went over, and uh, that will be our deliverable. Uh, obviously, we'll have recommendations, but it'll be up to the uh, authority board members to make the final site selection. So. Hopefully, this whole process will be done sometime around June or so. so that's about it. Yes, ma'am. You said, uh, excuse me, in May, that mm -hmm. maybe in May eliminate is possible. You may eliminate one site, right? Possible. We'll just have to see. Again, I want to move this through this thing as swiftly as possible, and I know you guys want to know that too, but that's kind of where I got laid out as initial concept layout. Okay, so. and your final meeting in June, mm -hmm. and then two weeks after uh, June, could you repeat that again for me? Two weeks after June is what I will consider uh, providing our deliverables to the authority. And our deliverables will be basically our report that gives recommendations on a particular site. Okay. And, uh, and then again, it'll be up to the authority to make a final decision. Yeah, yeah. remember that, uh, yeah, let me just make one comment about that. Remember, the uh, engineering firm is not making recommendations as what the board should do. I mean, it's not making decisions as to what the board will do. It's making recommendations to the board as what the feasibility is of each of those sites. And remember, each of those sites is bigger than the 30 acres. So there's issues with respect to which piece of the of whatever you pick would be involved and so on. So they are going to make their recommendations as the suitability of these sites, but they will not make the decision. Okay. How much will that weigh on that? I'm sorry? How much will that weigh on that? Well, it'll weigh a lot, obviously. We wouldn't have hired them otherwise. <laughs> but it doesn't say that they will make the decision, however because the, 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 the authority will use uh, other criteria in addition to what we get from them. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions. One, you said something about 100,000 square acres. No, no, it's square feet. feet. Square feet. Yeah, in, okay, and then you said at least 30 acres. 30, 30 acres will be the final full build out of the Park. Uh, whole project. Yes. Okay, can you give me some idea of about 
the boundaries of 30 acres or 35 acres here from uh, Jonesboro probably to where? Probably the best thing for me to do is show that on show that to you on a map. Um, okay. And, and I'll be happy to do that. Okay, you, one other thing. You said something about phases as if you would start doing one now and perhaps later on do another phase of in in the uh, in the in the in the work plan that was given to us by the authority, uh, what they wanted us to do is evaluate what a first phase might be, and that first phase would be a hundred thousand square foot building. A footprint that would be about twenty five thousand square foot, maybe four stories. Yeah. Uh, with adjacent parking. So that would be phase one. Um, and then the next part of it would be how it would build out the entire uh, 30 acres. Rest of it. Yeah. 30 acres. Yeah. Uh, Dixon, you had to come in. Why don't you help us visualize the 30 acres in terms of square blocks because these are all regularly flatted areas. That's true, and, they are. And what, tell us how many square blocks. 30 acres. 30 acres. acres. Without the maps, just just tell us. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I really need the map. <laughs> well, we know we about know. twelve. About twelve. Twelve blocks. It's between ten and twelve, mm -hmm. but when you consider the street rights way in between. Right, because some, some blocks are bigger than others, but about about twelve. The, the, the second thing I think we need to to all be reminded, and we should discuss your process of it, is. Going in, in the evaluation of sites, going through the and, and your layout, determination of the waste, and how that determines the the total size, sure. which may not be exactly 30 acres correct. because of the waste that's involved. Say with Coleman Creek. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. For instance, Coleman Creek, uh, that particular site, which is close to ALR, has a large floodplain through it. Floodplain. It's an uh, unusable property. So if you include that with being able to lay out the amount of square footage that we want the uh, ultimate uh, build out of the, of the technology park, uh, could be a lot larger than 30 acres if we include all that floodplain area with it too. Also things like topography, lay the land, things are real steep yeah. and you can't build, you know, you want a flat area for parking and, and your, your buildings, it takes up more area. Also. You know, there may be some green space, some 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 nature trails, and things like that that may want to be incorporated, which I think is very important, uh, which would increase the amount of property too. So, 30 acres is, is kind of a, a, a goal, but it may be larger than that. Right. One other yeah. uh, let me just make one announcement before I take your question, and that is that one of our other board members is actually here. Not in present, not in person, but he's on the telephone. Eddie Drilling is actually on the phone. So, if there are questions and comments that uh, Eddie you would like to make, uh, please speak up. Okay. Yeah. I have one thing. We're talking about the West Street corner. How far back are you going to move away from that? Or will all of that be a part of what you're doing? Well, again, we're looking at this particular study area. Uh, what we're calling study area three, which is on the north, on the south side, on the north side of 12th Street. Uh, right now, it's off that 12th Street, about 300 feet, something like that. Yes, sir. The 12th Street corner meeting, I believe, was in February. We had all the maps set up here. Mm -hmm. Katie Richardson said it was a good thing that y'all were on the same engineering company because we're also the engineering company for the 12th Street corner. Mm -hmm. And under that plan, he said that we were to remain a residential neighborhood. For us to remain that, so if we were to do study, would you consider reneging the agreement? Not that's a residential neighborhood. Again, we're, we're looking at this particular task that we're looking at is, is dealing with the, the Little Rock Technology Park. Right. The 12th Street corridor study, I, I don't know, I can't comment on that. And he said it was a good plan that you were the same company. Mm -hmm. And so we are in the study by your same company, and they said his plan came first. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's definitely things in the 12th Street corridor study that could be incorporated in this, yes. and, in that, and that is one of them. So, yes. Joyce? Um, I, I was just looking at the next to last part of this, the final concept laid out for you. Yes. Public comment. And as I read it, um, I'm taking into account that this final presentation 
will talk about how it best serves three entities here and make a decision on the proper thing for you. But this fourth, the fourth entity here uh, happens to be the people who are in the area. So, um, yeah. do you take into how? Explain to me how you take that into account. Because these three institutions have large interests, but so do the people who are there. So, what part of what you're doing will do something qualitative or however, and not just quantitative, mm -hmm. to give us a complete report about people in the area? Mm -hmm. As far as how it relates to the to the as far as how it impacts the neighborhood, yeah. Um, I mean, one thing we'll look at is the accessibility of it. Um, you know, which which neighborhoods it might fit in better, and things of that nature, um, and, and and just 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 how it fit fit in with with the different neighborhoods. Um, I mean, that's how we'll, we'll kind of look at it. Um, well, what I'm saying is, I I. I in order for it to fit in, somebody has to be fitted out, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, uh, is there going to be something in this report that doesn't seem to be mentioned here that gives the board some sense so that I have a complete um, report? Of, it's not just about these two institutions, right. but folks perhaps who, and you seem to indicate that folks who might still be in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. but will they get a sense of, and will you get a sense of before you make on the board, a sense of impact on individuals. Yeah. Is that part of what we I, I, I think our, what our focus is and what things we're going to be doing is going to be really more geared towards the engineering aspects right. on how the, how the different sites would best be developed. Um, you know, which sites um, would have less grading, dirt work, uh, which would be the, the most or the least amount of homes that will have to be taken out. Uh, that's how most of our report is going to be focused on. Senator, I think the I think the answer to your question is different. Um, the, the engineering firm is just that; it's an engineering firm, uh, and uh, the the issue that you're talking about with respect to the impact on the neighborhood, the authority will have to take that into consideration. But that's going to have to be the authority's uh, need to do that before a, before a, a, a site is selected because that was my point about reminding you that the engineering firm is not going to make the decision yeah. as to where it goes. The board will make the decision and the board itself will have to take into consideration the question you ask. So I think where you want to put your, your emphasis is on the people sitting at the table right. to be sure that that is part of their deliberations before the site is selected. And I'm going to bring up a, a topic here in just a minute that's going to help us do that, which I think you'll be pleased. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll okay. that. Okay. All right. Yes, yes, sir. Is the engineering firm also going to consider this so-called five-minute rule? I, I don't know what the five-minute rule is. Uh, five minutes distance to travel yeah. time and time from UALR to the site from UALS to the site. We, we would definitely evaluate uh, the proximity of each site as they relate to UALR, UAMS, and, and ULR. And can you explain to us where this five-minute rule is, is indicated? Well, again, what we're going to evaluate is which particular site is most close proximity <coughs> to the different entities that we talked about. Right. I, you know, five minute rule, I, I, I don't know. Yes, sir. I guess I will spend a minute on the screen, so I'll go ahead and say it. Five minutes, uh, you just, I mean, we're going to have to leave the trials. You can basically drive all over about 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, I think, though, uh, we made an explanation, or tried to anyway, but, it, but perhaps it's one that is not universally accepted. But there's been a lot of research done on research parks, uh, and it turns out that if they are successful, particularly in metropolitan areas, they have to be close enough to the educational institutions where the research is going on that it's extremely easy for people to come back and forth. Otherwise, they fail. 
Uh, we've talked to the people in the Richmond one, we've talked to people in the others, and it's simply, a, 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 it's, it, it's just a fact that those research parks that have been successful are close enough for the researchers to come and go very easily. That was the reason. It's not a five-minute rule. It is a, the, the issue is that it's got to be contiguous so that the research folks can come and go. For example, you'd like to be able to just run a shuttle bus that runs from the universities to the site, and you can't do that over 20, mi 20 miles. This we understand, and as I said, that's part of the, the board is going to have to take those things into consideration. Yes, sir. I had a question on the five minute thing. Do you all, I've heard that from you, do you have any documentation or studies that we can? We can have? certainly, Mike, had, you, Mike, you have some, I think, that we could put together for well, you. Know? Yeah, we can do that. There's, there's, there's uh, information that comes from the American Association of Research Parks. They have that information. So okay. we try to pull that Yeah, we can do that. That is you know, yes. I make it to your side for the production station. We can do that. Yeah. That was also that was also one of the recommendations in the consultant report right. that was mm -hmm. uh, delivered in two thousand nine. Which is on the website now. That is actually on the website. You can see right. that recommendation on the website. Uh, the, the main thing is that if you if you go ahead and build the park, it's going to create dislocations and that sort of thing wherever we put it. And so you want to be sure that you put it somewhere where it will be successful. The worst of all possible outcomes would be to do this and then end up with a park that, that fails. <laughs> then you're really in difficulties. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next item, you have one last question, right. I'm sorry. You have the goal, you have the goal, what's going to happen to the goal for the flight, which has to be five minutes from UWR, has to be three minutes from, uh, three minutes from uh, Children's Hospital, and that's about five minutes, maybe six minutes from my uh, JMS. That's a great site, you're not in this place anybody. Have you, have you even taken What site is that, I'm sorry? The old Western House building, out on Roosevelt. Right, right next to the Glasgow County Jail. That's an excellent site. There's plenty of, plenty of land in there. And it's five minutes from everything. It's five minutes from just this is your guidelines. But have you, have you asked Craft Colors Park to take a look at that as a possible alternative? We have not. Do you reason why? No reason why at the moment. The, the, the uh, consultants that we hired identified the three sites we're looking at now, and we'll see if any of those are reasonable. Uh, we cannot look at every potential site in the whole city of Little Rock. I don't think that's a feasible thing to do. But we are not, what, we have not picked one of these, and so we'll see. Well, just a quick follow-up. Not saying you should, not saying you should pick one of them, but I think, and considering this place of residence, and we understand. You went to you went this place anyway, and you picked the site of that. That pretty much is inside the guidelines. We have pretty, plenty of room to expand. So, my point was. We hear you, and uh, we'll take it into consideration. 